Welcome to the program Straight Bullet. My name is Steve Matambo Ngoma. Today we are talking to Linda Masarira, a political activist who also happened to be the inspiring MP for Harare Central. Hello, Linda, how are you? Fine, thanks, and you, how are you doing? I'm great, okay. Who is Linda Masarira? Linda Masarira is a political activist, a human rights defender. I'm passionate about human rights. And I don't think that um, there's anyone who's more Zimbabwean than the other. We are all Zimbabweans and we all deserve equal opportunities. And uh, my struggle, the struggle that I've been fighting since 2007, is a struggle of equality, um, a struggle for, for justice, a, sag a struggle for economic rights. Because I, I really personally don't believe that anyone should be suffering in a very rich country like Zimbabwe. Okay. I understand you formed a group, uh, Zimbabwe Alliance, uh, Zimbabwe Women in Alliance in Politics. Okay, can you tell tell us more about uh, the organization? What's all about? I understand you, you formed it. Is it last year? What's all about the, the, the organization that you formed? Uh, point of correction. It's actually called Zimbabwe Women in Politics Alliance. It was formed in March 2015. The main reason I formed Zimbabwe Women in Politics Alliance it was after the realization that women are used as tokens in political parties with no real power. I formed this organization to capacitate women to make women believe in themselves through through trainings, through advocacy work, and through fighting for our own rights. You realize that um, since we had the new constitution in 2018, section 56 is clear about equality equal opportunities to all, whether social, economic and political, but that is not being realized in reality and in principle. We are not seeing that being reflected in the lives of women. Women are still suffering from a vicious cycle of exclusion where they are where they have got no opportunities at all to, 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 to economic freedoms, to political freedoms, to social freedoms. So the main reason I formed um, Zimbabwe Women in Politics Alliance was to ensure that women get the necessary education, the necessary capacity building to ensure that they are also capable to run for office and on equal footing with men. Okay. I understand uh, this one is different now from what we are talking about. You have been arrested several times and you have spent some time in the Roman prison at uh, Chikurubi. Can you explain to us the condition of the uh, our prisons, especially for women in Zimbabwe? Um, the condition of the prisons are deplorable. Um, the food is terrible. Um, and sanitary way and um, detergents and all other things that are needed to be in a safe space are actually donated by donors. So it got me wondering what the money, the budget that is allocated to prisons is used for. Because if donors don't bring sanitary wear, if they don't bring soap, if they don't bring toothpaste, the prisoners don't have all that. But the moment a person becomes a prisoner, they are under government care. And government should ensure that all those things, especially the basics, are available for a prisoner. But the government is not doing that. So you'll find that um, life is very difficult for a prisoner, especially when there is no donor aid. So they have to rely on everything from donors, from medication, from for them to eat a proper diet, it has to come from the donors. If no donors donated anything to the prisons, no one eats a basic healthy diet in prison. So you find that um, um, the state of our prisons is very terrible and it really needs to be worked on. And the government really has to make sure that they put in more money to ensure that prisoners also have a com comfortable life in prison. Of the one, the interesting one is the, the one that he came through the coup. Can you explain to us why did you come up with, the, with, the, with this challenge? We are actually challenging um, Justice Jewish's judgment, which he, which he did in his chambers, constitutionalizing a coup. It is also imperative to note that bad presidents were set by that because uh, they are actually trying to insinuate that having a coup is constitutional, yet it is unconstitutional. We also have to realize that Section 206 to 213 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe was violated by the army. The military has got no role whatsoever to play within partisan politics, and that is what happened in Zimbabwe. We should also note that the army has been interfering with politics since 1980. There have been interfering with elections. And for me and my fellow activists and the revolutionary freedom fighters and liberal democrats, what led us to file that was the realization that we have always been reactionary as a nation after having elections being rigged, yet we don't take the necessary precautions before elections to ensure that we are not going to go into a captured election. One thing that um, really struck me when I did my introspection was the realization that almost every key state institution is now, being is not, is now captured by the military. 
Zimbabwe is a constitutional democracy. The constitution remains the supreme law of this country. And it is a fallacy to think that going for elections with an illegitimate government will actually usher in free, fair and credible elections. Because E.D. and Chiwenga have been the chief architects of the rigging machinery, the long sleeve, long sleeve that we saw, we saw in 2008, where Zanupi have invested in violence such that in 2018 people didn't go out to vote. And today, we want to believe that the very same team will actually deliver free and fair elections. That is a fallacy. I just want to, I just say to myself, this has to be done. I wanted to do this in December. I engaged the various different lawyers, but lawyers were, say, were skeptical. They were saying, no, nyayi no pisa, nyayi no uraya, nyayi no sodaiso. Some would say, ndichiri mwana mdiki, I cannot take up this case. But I say to myself, tikaramba, chingo siya zunis chiendirira. We are continuing with the same negative, repetitive behavior. Yo chungwa ramba chingo chema kutita rigwa, jinafisku famba. We also have to realize that all the problems that we have in Zimbabwe are because of constitutionalism. We've got no medication in hospitals because no one follows the constitution. No one, no one respects the right to health. We've got condemned water running out of our taps because the, no one follows the constitution and no one cares about our right to water. So it, I, I just say to myself, I have to be a trailblazer. I have to put in the first step to challenge all constitutional violations because it is critical for us to live in a, in a, in a constitutional democracy and to ensure that the constitution remains the supreme law of this land. Campaign for the Harare Central as an independent can candidate. Why not join hands with the opposition, the movement for democ democratic change? I understand you, you, you once participated in their programs. Why not join hands in, in the, just to, 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 to fight the seat in the MDC, in the Dem MDC ranks? It is critically important to also note that there is no space for women in political parties in Zimbabwe. I've tried to engage them. And they, I, what they told me was, and PR. Honestly, I'm not a freebie. I don't want freebie things. If our constitution speaks of equality, let's have that equality. If we look at their 210 constituencies and the lineup, you'll find that there are very few women in it. This is a, 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 we're still suffering from a patriarchal nature in Zimbabwe. Go to any political party, even my Mujuru's party, you'll find that even in your own executive, she's got very few women. There is no space for women who are outspoken, who challenge the status quo, and who want things done the right way. I will not be silenced because I want to belong. I will belong because we share the same ideologies and we are concerned about the progress of this country. And I've been clear with the MDC Alliance. They've actually spoken to me, even when we were at the funeral at... Um, at Morgan Shangri's funeral, it was an informal chat. They were saying, Toka Kumba. And I said, no problem, Kumba and not Toka. But and not Toka if you give me my seat. If you don't give me my seat, I'm not going to come back there. Why should I come back there to clap hands for, for some other people? When my constituency, the female constituents, is suffering. We are suffering from exclusion. Go to any hospital. No one has been talking about us. Look at the vendors in the streets. 80% of them are women and they are beaten on a daily basis. No one speaks about it. So I have to rise up and ensure that I stand up for the vendors. I stand up for the suffering workers at NRZ and GMB who are not getting paid their salaries on time. These are things that have not been spoken about in the parliament. If they've been spoken about, they've just been spoken about in passing. Yet there are key critical and fundamental issues that are critical for sustainable human development. Okay, as an aspiring MP, what are you promising the people for the Harare Central, which is different from the norms that we've known before? What are you promising to the electorate? What are you promising them, which you are, which are going to implement it different from other MPs that came through before? What, I've, what I'm already doing is I'm a servant leader, I'm engaging, I'm always on the ground with them, trying to hear their issues, how we can do things differently. And what I am seriously promising is I will ensure that rule of law is observed in Zimbabwe with like-minded parliamentarians, that is if I make it to parliament. Because one of the critical issues like I raised is all our problems are emanating from lack of constitutionalism in this country. I will ensure that what the water crisis becomes a, um, something from from the past. You'll find that in Avenues area, very few floods have got running water. You'll find that um, in most areas where water is even coming out, it's dirty. No one can drink that water even to bath with it. But I'm saying this is one area that I'm passionate about because water is life. Water, water is a right, a basic fundamental right. I will ensure that whether it's the local government which does not want to disperse money to make sure that we've got clean sources of water, it shall be there because we cannot start talking of a sustainable uh, livelihood when we've got um, dirty water coming out of, out of our tapes. One of the other things that I've realized is there's so much poverty in our Central, drug abuse, 
and I'm, I'm coming up with projects to sustain livelihoods that I'm trying to do with our women in the, the constituency, with the youth, to ensure that we get them out of the idleness, out of prostitution, out of, out of um, drug abuse, because it is critically important to ensure that we teach people how to catch fish, not to give them fish, like what other political parties have been doing over time. So I'm, I'm more interested in uh, turning our central into a special economic zone. We've got a lot of... Um, historical sites in, 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 in NRI Central. We've got flora and fauna, we've got museums, and there's a lot that we can do to generate uh, income in NRI Central. All right, thank you very much, Linda, for coming to the program. Hello there, welcome to the second segment of the Stray Bullet. This segment, I'm talking to Abigail Mpambi, the spokesperson of RFFF, and also the leader of the Constitution Alliance. Abigail, tell more about yourself. Who is Abigail Mpambi? Uh, Abigail Mpambi is a pro-democracy activist and like you've just said, leader of uh, this Constitution Alliance and also the spokesperson of uh, uh, the Revolutionary Freedom Fighters. Uh, of course, I'm based in Matibeleland uh, region, but with the, uh, the national constituents that we are covering. Yes. Okay, what made you support the, the Linda, uh, Linda Masariri agenda, the one, the, the constitutional challenge? What made you to support the agenda? Oh, okay, maybe let me put it straight. The, the, that's a national agenda. Mm -hmm. Issues to do with uh, constitutionalism are not personal agendas. They are national agendas. We are speaking to issues of the supremacy of the constitution, as uh, alluded in our constitution sex, section 2, before we go even to other various sections that speaks to that. So, uh, is a national agenda. Actually, it's a mandate to the people of Zimbabwe to do that. But most of you guys are hiding. We have actually started to know this organization this morning. What are you doing as an organization to, 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 to educate other women, to know that there are other groups that can fight for women, the other groups that can fight for this constitution? What are you doing as an organization? Oh, thank you very much. We are not hiding. Maybe let me, uh, in short, say the revolution that led even to what we saw happening in Zimbabwe had been the People's Revolution through such organizations. So we are not hiding and I think it's, you, you, we appreciate yes, you reaching us and a lot is being done to, to, to reach out to women, to reach out to communities and it is one way. As you see, voices going to the, to the courts, voices going across, and you, right, you realize right now that many people are beginning even to come up with women trying also to take these catchy positions in politics, and they're speaking out like we are speaking out. It's a process. You can't do it one day. It is a process indeed. Okay, suppose you win this, uh, this uh, initiative in courts, okay? What are you promising the people of Zimbabwe? Or suppose you lose, the, um, I wanted to say, suppose you lose this, uh, what, 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 expect, what, what do you expect maybe after you lose this case? Suppose you lose the case. Um, are you planning uh, maybe to go another step or maybe to, to mobilize people? Or what, what, what's the next uh, move? Suppose you lose this case with Linda in the courts. First of all, it is not about losing. It is about doing what is right. If we are, this thing is going to be lost and that can be defined as justice, so be it. If this thing is, is going to be approached through justice that we will feel that it has been applied well and it is won that way or lost that way, so be it. But you should realize that as the people of Zimbabwe, where we see that things are not done right, we have, before we even, con we don't even need to convince as many people as possible. We need to approach the courts and let, air out the way we have did that we feel that the, there is something wrong here. This government, according to us, is illegitimate. So to that end, it is now the role of the courts to preside over this. Abigail, as a parting shot, what do you want to say to the people of Zimbabwe in general? In general, I want to say to the people of Zimbabwe, people of Zimbabwe should learn to rally behind a principle other than a principal. We are beginning to see that if we don't do that, this issue that has visited our countries of coups after coups is going to grow into a veiled fire. To an extent that as we stand here, we have the MDCT beginning to have the same thing. From here it might go as far as burial societies, as far as even simple and small projects. And what will be our tomorrow will just be just like a jungle, led by the jungle rule system, survival of the fittest. Is this what we want? We can't go forward like this. 
Viewers, you've heard for yourself. I was talking to Abigail Mpambi, the spokesperson of RFF and the leader of this Constitution Alliance. You've heard for yourself. For views and comments, you can actually post on our social media platform.